Declining a call because you don't feel like talking is a part of self-care. Mm. And it resonated with me because I am a chronic phone call ignorer. And <laughs> I do it in the moment because it literally feels like I'm protecting my peace. And it's not to say that the person on the other end is a bad person or they're an energy vampire or anything. It's just at that moment, I don't have it. I don't got it. I can't, you know what I mean? And sometimes it's even too much to text back and explain that. So that's what the beef was in the comments. It was just, everybody was like, well, you could communicate. You don't want to talk. You don't have to ignore. That's just rude and da da da. So I want to know how y'all feel about it. And if you do this as well. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I do the same thing. I'm an okay. ignorer as well. Sometimes it depends on the person. But if we're specifically speaking about protecting our peace, feeling like yeah. we have to protect our peace and our mind um, and our energy, I definitely um, I ignore it. Mm -hmm. And depending on the person, I'll just get back. I'll just text and say, hey, I can't talk right now, but I'll call you back when I get a chance. Right. Um, and then sometimes some people don't need that, that like an explanation after that. Just, all right, I was busy with something or like I was just yeah. busy. Um, depending on the person, they usually won't ask, like, what were you doing? Or, um, but listen, I'm all for, I mean, again, maybe this is the Scorpio energy in us, Terry. Yeah. But I'm very quick to just kind of like exclude or just not answer or just remove Right. myself in order to protect my sanity and my energy i have to do that sometimes so yeah. i i agree and i don't think there's anything wrong with that yeah i have to agree too and i do have scorpio in my chart so maybe that is a scorpio <laughs> element of me too but i've always felt that way you know i've always struggled with like certainly the advent of technology affords us so many things one of which is the ability to stay connected on a 24-7, 365 basis, but whether it's work or personal, I've never felt an obligation to answer a text, a phone call right away. You know, my mom might take issue with that. And like, mm -hmm. when she used to pay my phone bill, it'd be like, if you don't answer your phone, you know, <laughs> that was a different case. Now I yeah. pay my own bill. And so no one has that kind of leverage over me. Okay. But yeah, right. I mean, I, 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 you know, the only instance in which I could understand someone getting upset which is why that follow-up comment is so important is the communicative aspect so if someone right. is like calling you you know several days in a row texting you and you're not responding yeah obviously you may not want to speak to that person but just communicate that in a way like don't i don't really i don't believe in ghosting right. you know unless right. there's like a, a reason to do so um but yeah, I think it's perfectly fine. And yeah, I agree, not answering phone calls is self-care. And especially right now too, like certainly probably more people are making calls just to sort of stay connected. I know I've talked more with my family. We have like a weekly Zoom call that we all join from all over the country. Um, you know, but at the same time, it's like we are going through an unprecedented time. And so you may not, even all the time, you may not feel like necessarily speaking with other people or being connected. And you have to really honor your energy in that way. You know, I think that's something we touched upon last week. And this is just one of those things that falls in that category. I agree. I don't believe in ghosting people either. I think that's actually really disrespectful. I think it's mm -hmm. rude. Um, and again, if, if you, like you said, if this is something that's going on, like over time, like some of your blatantly ignoring someone's phone call then yes communication is super important but i do believe like if it's a one-time thing or like here and there not the same person and just different people i think that there's nothing wrong with doing that i mean if it's prolonging then yes communicate we're adults use your words um but damn there was something else i wanted to say and i can't remember um but yeah i definitely disagree with ghosting people absolutely I, and you know, like y'all said, it's like different degrees to it because it's like certain people I'm not going to feel obligated to say anything. It's like we don't even know each other like that. We don't have a pattern. But the people I do have a pattern with, I will admit that there is this, there was an amount of guilt when I first started to do it. 
because then I feel like I'm letting someone down. What if they really need me? And, you know, I, I'm definitely a type of person that has a bit of codependency issues. So it's like, I feel guilty now because I'm not there. I'm not there to support or whatever the case may be. But then I had to turn around. It's like, at this moment, this is how I'm supporting myself. Right. And right. no one's going to do that for you, but you. And so, you know, so what, what do you think you should say to the people that feel like, is disrespectful because I've seen a separate tweet um, posted by Tia Maori, and I don't have it in front of me, so I'm paraphrasing. But she kind of referenced like, pay attention to the people who's reaching out to you right now, and when this is all over, you know, know how to deal with people. And someone replied and said, "Yeah, that's kind of narcissistic to say something like that because you don't know what that other person is dealing with." Um, so would y'all say it's it's going as far to say that people who try to shame people for protecting their space, narcissistic. I mean, maybe there are, I mean, I think we all fall on various levels of whatever classification you might want to put out there, narcissistic being one of them. Um, I do think it's an interesting take. And I think that anyone who feels like personally attacked or slighted by someone yeah. ignoring a phone call probably needs to reevaluate some things going on within. Um, I, conversely, I saw a tweet today that was like, you know, if you haven't heard from me, didn't get a text, didn't get a phone call, whatever, but, it, you know, or I think it was like, if I haven't heard from you at the end of all this, right, it's like, I'm going to assume that you were, like everybody else, you were just trying to get through it, and I'm not going right. to take it personally, right. and I retweeted that because that really <laughs> resonated with me, like, you know, certainly there are people that I'm trying to say in you know, consistent communication with and, you know, like by nature of having this, this weekly podcast, for instance, like we all talk and engage at least on a weekly basis, a little bit more through text, right? Or like, again, with family. But the fact of the matter is, that's just not something that's feasible to do with every, with every single person that I know, you know, either very closely or like loosely as an acquaintance in my life. And nor is that how I care to spend the majority of my time, you know? So I think, you know, that's really about having personal boundaries yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting to me when boundaries that you implement for your own protection and your own self-care and your own, you know, personal, emotional, physical, mental, spiritual health, whatever, other people take issue with it. Because it's usually, there is a selfish element there usually because yeah. they are something that they want to be able to access or get at their convenience hmm. and at their leisure, never mind how you might be feeling or how you right. feel about it. And that's a hard pill to swallow. A lot of people won't admit that. It is very hard to swallow. I'm the type, so I have, um, and this is an issue that I notice more with like um, newer friends or some acquaintances who want to get closer. Um, I've had this conversation several times with several people, um, with different people um that i don't reach out enough and the thing is that i'm the type of person that i don't i'm not gonna hit you up all the time again i am someone that really enjoys my own time my own space so i'm not always thinking about other people and sometimes i can be depending on my relationship with the person i can be an out of sight out of mind type of person depending on the connection and relationship um but when i think about you i do hit people up but someone comes up to my mind I'm like I, I hit them up because I feel like it's for a reason but I've had several conversations with newer friends and they're addressing and saying like you know I don't hear from you much I feel like I'm the one that's always reaching out I'm the one that's always um initiating us to hang out and I'm just like well like I and that's when I started realizing am I a, more of a loner than I think I am like I enjoy my my own time and my solitude and so um, I, listen, I've had people tell me multiple times, like, you are very selfish. And I don't take offense to that sometimes, because we have to be, like you said, we have to be selfish to some extent um, to, for our own self-care, for our own benefit. Um, I mean, I completely agree with everything Tamika said. And sometimes I feel like some of those people are projecting stuff, like they're projecting certain things. And, they, and it's like something that they need to, like Tamika said, that they need to go inward and kind of explore. Agreed. Absolutely. 
I too have been accused of being the not so engaged absent friend, but I, I feel the same way as you do about it. I'm just sort of like, well, <laughs> you know, it just, it, to me, it doesn't hold mustard because in my personal relationships and engagements, I know I am so supportive. And so if I'm a little bit out of sight, out of mind in terms of communication, it's A, definitely not something personal and B, not really a reflection of, you know, the depth of my investment in any given relationship, you know? So, facts. I, you know, and it makes I me agree. think too, like with uh, friendships or even family, it's important to know each other's beats. Like, if I'm like not as present or not as, you know, like you can tell someone's temperature sometimes from social media, like, oh, they're not posting as much as they used to, or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, like, know the beats enough to say, okay, they probably just need a minute. You know what I mean? And yeah. it takes time to develop that. And it, it, for me, I would love to have people be more intuitive. Like, be yeah, intuitive, yes. not only to just your energy, but to your people's too. And because I don't want to have to sit there it's, and explain, you know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, oh, I know what you're talking about like... is other people's emotional intelligence, yes. you know? Yeah. I hear you 100 and and you can notice that too right like i've had periods where i've struggled with depression in my life right and mm -hmm. i've had some friends who are like where you disappear like what happened and other friends who are like oh i figured you know something was going on you just needed time to yourself and that you come you'd come back around when you were ready yeah. and i really appreciate that latter perspective because it takes so much pressure off mm -hmm. you know Absolutely. I agree. And um I and some and you know what I was thinking too? I can always flip it around and say that that other person is being selfish as well because they're being they're thinking about themselves. They're they want to use up my energy, they want to use up my time that I yeah. want to um devote to something else that's more beneficial to my personal growth. Um and oftentimes it's it, that's exactly what it is too, emotional intelligence and people just not really it's almost like a love language, you know, like in order, yes. and this is why yes. sometimes I honor, like I literally tell people I appreciate you for expressing that. And like, I would try, sometimes depending on the connection and the relationship with, that I have with the person, I do try to um, work on that. But sometimes that can feel really draining to me. Like I just feel like mm -hmm. I'm doing more than I should. Um, but it's the same as, I think of it as like a love language. like. This is how person A loves, and this is how person B loves. It doesn't always match, but in order to let person A know that you love them, you should treat them, you should do things in the way that they see um, love and vice versa. So I do try sometimes to like, again, depending on the relationship I have with the person to kind of go, you know, go out of my way a little bit, or yeah. just like do something to make them feel, that's gonna make them happy. Um, Cause the thing yeah. is, like at the end of the day, I people want to spend time with us, you know, and that's something that I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for having love in my life and having people that want to that enjoy my company and my energy, my mind, things that I have to say. But then there are people who are just draining you, literally use you for your energy and just for your light and like your positive energy and not really. Um, What's the word? Uh, like, like fill your cup you. back up. Yeah. Yeah. They exactly. don't reciprocate, and sometimes exactly. they don't even know that that's what they do. But yes, right. yeah, that's what they do. They right. have no idea. There's definitely yeah. a level of unawareness that's happening. Speaking of that unawareness, they don't know, and then it's like I'm constantly feeling shamed or guilted or whatever the case may be for needing my room. Um, do you think the responsibility also falls on us to express that? Like, as uncomfortable as it is, or, you know, because for me specifically, dealing with depression, I have to now explain that part of it too. And I don't know if I'm necessarily comfortable, you know, in that situation with the person to really reveal, you know, things that I'm figuring out for myself. And so, yeah. which is a double edged sword because, you know, the best way to go is to be vulnerable. You never know if that person was dealing with it too and they can offer support, but it's, it's a lot more complicated than that. And so do you think it's really the responsibility of the person to 
you know, like let that person know, like, this is what I'm dealing with and why I need my space, like break it down to that person so they completely understand. I think it depends on the relationship, the connection. But yeah, to some extent, we do have to, we have to teach people, you know, we have to teach people um, how to understand us, how to love us, how to be around us, and this is who we are, um, and bring awareness, bring that, and bring light to them. I agree. Yeah, same. I agree too. And I think, I think, you know, relationships are reciprocal, or at least they're supposed to be. Yes. So it should be a process, right? And... I'm trying to think like sometimes I do well when I think of like specific sort of not specific examples but like sort of let's put a real life situation to it yeah. right and I'm thinking of like we probably all have ha have had this happen to us where we meet someone new you know seems interesting enough friendly enough conversation but you know probably just a few hours or whatever exchange contact information you know and and I think I'm talking more about the person who might be like an inadvertent energy vampire, right? Mm. And <laughs> like who, someone who is like, who is like almost overly eager to sort of be your friend or be in your company, for whatever reason, right? That to me is almost always a red flag. Like, yeah. because if a relationship is, you know, for me, when I meet people and I really set out to build friendships or working relationships or romantic relationships, it's like, uh, you know, there's longevity involved, at least in my mind. So it's like, there is no rush here, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and especially yeah. if I don't know you that well, it's sort of like, where is that coming from? You know? <laughs> Um, like shit, I ain't that cool. Calm down. Like <laughs> it makes me really wonder, like what their other relationships are right. like, if there are any. You know, oftentimes you'll find people like that don't have a lot of people around them. So again, yeah, it's like they actually need to do introspection themselves on yeah. why yeah. that is that their relationships turn out that way, and it has very little to do with other people, as opposed to do with things that they need need to work on internally. Yeah. Um, and oftentimes, and also, mm -hmm. they're like the people like that are usually codependent. Mm. People. Yes, very, very much codependent. So. Mm. And I was gonna say to the point of the original tweet, to me that's actually a tactic to set those kinds of boundaries and temper that kind of thing. You know, like yeah. someone who I've just met who calls back to back or texts. It's like you're not going to get an immediate response from me because in no way, shape, or form do I want you to think that this is going to be the established norm of communication. So, yes, and, you know, I used, to feel sad. I used to feel guilty about it too, mm -hmm. but I think I've done so much work around intentions and boundaries in the past couple of years that, or I don't know, maybe, you know, they say as you get older, you just start giving less of a fuck. Yeah, and I just, I'm like, part. I don't have... I don't have time for, yeah. you know, people who aren't willing to understand that or aren't willing to learn and to grow on themselves, so. Yes. I 100%. agree with you, girl, 100%, 1,000%, 1, I agree with yeah. you. And that's, an, an, that, wow, that's so fucking hilarious because I literally do that. Because sometimes I feel like some people, they're, because when I, I'm a very, I'm an honest person, but like, I, I'm blunt with, with my honesty. Like, I just, I'm not, like, not blunt where I'm disrespectful, but I'm direct. Like, I yeah. just say it out. And then some people find that a little too harsh or they're, like, especially we're communicating through text, so, like, they can't see me or kind of sense my energy. Because um, usually I just do it with a smile. And then, like, people <laughs> are like, oh, wow, you're so honest and real. <laughs> but if they're reading it in the text, they're like, oh, this bitch. Wow. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um but um i do that in hoping that some people get um the message you know get the hinting like messages and some people just don't get it and then that's when you have to be direct and you just like listen sometimes i just think if someone acts like that and they disrespect your boundary and they clearly don't want to learn and understand your boundary they're not meant to be in your life long term anyway they're yep. in it for some for some hidden motive yeah. some hidden agenda especially with the work that you do like all of us we are like right. sometimes people want a social climb or they just want to use us for a certain thing and then we don't hear from them anymore once they get right. that thing and it's like oh wow like okay 
mm. you know? So mm -mm -mm. it's very I mean, telling behavior, isn't it? 